Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for your patience as we have had to move to a new system. This is the largest webinar we've ever held. Almost 3,000 students and parents have registered, and it seems as though our other platform was overwhelmed by the volume. So we appreciate you very much being flexible with us, and I want to call significant attention to my two colleagues, Lauren Lipyanka and Katie Hager, who in a heartbeat shifted over to this new platform. So kudos to them and thank you so much for your assistance this evening. I'd like to begin our hour by thanking you all for spending some time with us this evening and extending a warm congratulations to all of the newly admitted members of Boston College's class of 2024. Uh, this is an incredibly exciting moment we know for you and for your families and we're thrilled that so many parents could sign in to join us this evening as well. As we shared last Wednesday in our newsletter, we also realize that this is a difficult time for you as your plans going through this college search have changed immediately. We just a month ago were making plans for the first of our online program to be taking place this coming Sunday. And like all of you, our plans changed and we had to pivot. And our staff has come up with a series of in-person and on-demand formatting for you to be able to learn more about Boston College. And we're thrilled that you could join us this evening to kick off that program. As I mentioned, almost 3,000 of you logged in uh, and over 500 questions were submitted in advance. Uh, I'm good, but I can't handle 500 questions in an hour. So what we've done is we have worked to compile your questions into a series of themes. And we intend to spend some time tonight helping you learn a little bit more about Boston College from those themes. But tomorrow at around one o'clock, you should check your inboxes because our second newsletter will go out and it is the most robust newsletter that we will be sending over the course of April. And it will introduce you to a series of engagement opportunities with our current students, with members of our alumni, and members of our faculty and staff. We have an incredible program set up for you, the first of which begins tomorrow night. So if you're interested in starting our webinar series tomorrow night with students talking about residential life, uh, that would be an important time for you to check your email tomorrow afternoon and register. So not all of the questions will be answered this evening, but many of those that I touch upon will be covered in much greater detail through the course of these additional webinars and online virtual panels to take place throughout the course of April. There are also some questions that, quite frankly, I don't have answers for yet. And I know, like all of us at Boston College, many of you have questions about what the coming months will hold. We're all watching uh, with great anticipation uh, some of the trends that are happening with the coronavirus, COVID-19, and wondering when different parts of the country and different parts of the world will see peaks. We're hopeful that classes will fully resume in the fall and we are working toward that goal. But many of the questions that you've posed around uh, what will happen between now and then still have answers uh, that are left, uh, questions that are left unanswered. So I will do my best to talk a little bit about those to the extent possible. But without further ado, let me begin by talking about the first area of interest. And by and large, the most common question that we received was about residential life. Students and parents had questions about the two campuses where first year students live, whether students are living on campus for all four years, whether uh, the different styles of residence halls and how those are structured, questions about registering for housing and when that questionnaire will be available and how to interact with other students, those that will become your roommates perhaps uh, in the months ahead. So let me talk first by mentioning, if you're not familiar already, that Boston College does have two first year campuses, two freshman campuses. Our campus, if you've not been to Boston College, is located in Chestnut Hill and on Chestnut Hill. It's a three tiered campus with the middle portion, our academic area, where most of your classes will take place, where ma the main libraries are held, and all of the academic aspects are there. 
just down the stairs, about 100 stairs on the lower campus, east of main campus, you'll find our lower campus. And that's where most of our upper class students live. Much of our residential uh, and co-curricular activities take place there. The football stadium, the athletic complex, the theater, uh, many of those opportunities are on the lower campus. Just heading east, up another short walk up a hill, about a seven to 10 minute walk from main campus is our upper campus. And that's home to about 60% of our students. And then about one mile and a quarter down Commonwealth Avenue to the west, you'll find our Newton campus houses about 40% of our freshmen. Now, Upper Campus and Newton Campus, in terms of their style of housing, in terms of the occupancy in the rooms, are quite similar. It's simply the location and the size that are different. As I mentioned, about 1,400 students, mostly freshmen and some sophomores, will live on the Upper Campus. The convenience is of main reason that many of our students will choose that campus for being able to walk down to classes and walk back in the middle of the day. But just about a five to 10 minute bus ride away is the Newton campus. Uh, our students that live on Newton campus often talk about its closer sense of community with only about eight or 900 students living there. It very much feels like a small college. And so for some of you that might be considering Boston College against some smaller institutions, it could be a good fit for you. Newton campus is fully self-sustaining. It has everything you need except for undergraduate classes. It has its own dining hall, its own library, its own chapel, its own workout facilities. The varsity athletic fields are over there uh, for soccer and field hockey. So it provides a great activity uh, location for students and they'll just come back to campus at, for classes each day and go home at the end of the night. So when you talk to our students, and I hope you'll engage with our students over the course of the next several weeks through these webcasts that we have, I think you'll find a healthy rivalry between the two campuses. Students that live on Newton would never dream of living on Upper, and students who live on Upper would never imagine taking a bus over to Newton. So your campus will become your home. When you apply, to, uh, submit your application, your enrollment to Boston College, we will encourage you uh, to very quickly fill out your housing questionnaire, your housing survey. That will be available on April 15th. In your admission packet, we referenced an April 1st deadline. It's not an April Fool's joke, but uh, because of the changes, we needed a little more time for our current students to move through the housing selection process so that we could then open up the housing application to freshman applicants. So on April 15th, you will have that opportunity to complete that form. Now, that form is important because it allows us to learn a little bit more about your expectations of your room. And this is often used to help students find roommates and help our residence life staff match students according to their interests and expectations. And what I mean by that is the survey will ask you questions uh, as to whether or not you like to get up early in the morning or sleep until noon whether you want your room to be social space or study space, uh, whether you are a smoker or a non-smoker. Certainly smoking isn't allowed in the residence halls, but we always try to maintain that we don't put a smoker with a non-smoker. So these are questions that are important because they help us match you with students based on, again, your expectations for the room. Working out the personalities is part of life and we have every confidence that you'll be able to manage that process successfully. Now, students can also choose their own roommate. So if you know somebody coming to Boston College, that's one way. We encourage you to join our Facebook group for the admitted class of 2024. If you're not already a member, we find every year that many students have found their roommates by getting to know each other through that channel. Also, over the course of engaging with students through social media, through email and other means, you might uh, pick up the phone, you might have conversations, Zoom conversations, FaceTime, whatever it is that you use, and find a match that way. But again, if you don't have a roommate in mind, or if you haven't found someone through that, those channels, rest assured that our process will match you accordingly. Now, within the residence halls, most freshmen will live in either doubles or triples. Our residence halls are situated by gender, so all men on one floor, all women on another. They have communal bathrooms, they have common rooms that are shared throughout the course uh, of the residence hall. 
So it provides students a, a lot of ways to get to know each other, to work in and out of each other's uh, spaces as you're, you're again learning from each other in the residential area. Again, I mentioned there will be web webcasts. So just to let you know, tomorrow night is the very first uh, webcast that we'll provi provide. It is a student panel, a virtual panel at eight o'clock tomorrow night. So watch your email tomorrow afternoon if you're interested in hearing from some students about their experience. We'll also be offering a Saturday webinar uh, with members of our staff from Residential, residential Life and Campus Dining. Uh, and that will be on April 4th, so coming up this Saturday. So again, watch your email for information. The next question that we had offered, uh, asked most commonly was around financial aid. And many of you asked the question, uh, when will I receive my financial aid award? When you received your offer of admission to Boston College, in your admission packet, in the paper version that we mailed or the email version that we sent, there is behind your admission letter, another piece of paper that will give you information to your financial aid access key. Now, if your application for financial aid was fully complete when you, your admission application, uh, when your admission decision was received, you would have received a financial aid award. So if you haven't checked out that key already, that's the first thing you need to do. Your award very well might be there waiting for you. If you get to that, uh, account and you don't have an award, it means that your application is currently incomplete. The general forms that we require are the federal, uh, the FAFSA form, the free application for federal student aid, the CSS profile form, which is a form that many private universities use in addition to the FAFSA. We'll also ask for parent taxes from 2018, the, files, the taxes you filed a year ago, April, and also your W-2 forms. If students worked and filed taxes last year as well, we would be looking for those. So if your application is incomplete, please reach out either to the admission officer listed in your admitted student portal, or click on the financial aid button within your portal, and you'll find an alphabetical breakdown of your financial aid counselors with their email address. Because our campus is working remotely right now, if you send documents through the mail, there is generally a seven to 10 day lag for that mail to get to our processing center, scanned in and to be evaluated. So therefore, if you're comfortable emailing those documents, again, either to your personal admission counselor or to your financial aid counselor that you can find on that portal, that is the most, the fastest way for that, uh, for those forms to get to us. And our financial aid staff is incredible and are turning around awards very, very quickly, typically within about 48 hours of that application being complete. So please check that information. There were questions about whether or not Boston College offers merit scholarships and whether families could be expecting a merit scholarship. Boston College, outside of the Gabelli Presidential Scholars Program, a program that awards just 15 full tuition merit scholarships, uh, Boston College does not offer merit awards. The reason being is that we are one of just 20 private universities in the entire country that are both need blind in the admission process and guaranteed to meet the full financial need of every student we admit. It's an enormous commitment. Over $140 million a year is awarded at Boston College through need-based scholarships and grants. It's an incredible undertaking because we've chosen to spend our money that way, as opposed to what many other colleges choose to do is award students merit as a way to try to entice them from other schools. Uh, we feel that in line with our mission of trying to make education accessible to all, that that is the best use of our resources. So we are very proud of that commitment, but it does provide some limitations for families that might be considering merit scholarships elsewhere. If you're interested in speaking with a member of the financial aid staff, if you have received an award and you have some concerns about it or are trying to work through the ambiguity of the realities of our current financial challenges, we would encourage you to pick up the phone or send an email to your financial aid counselor. They are more than happy to have conversations and to provide advice and guidance for you and really to make sure that we fully understand your financial background uh, in order to secure that award. Now, I will also mention that on April 11th, we will offer 
a fin financing your education webinar with a member of our financial aid staff, and I'll be there helping to moderate as well. An additional question that we receive had to do with career outcomes. We know that as you are making your college decision, many of you are thinking about the value of a Boston College education, not just the academic experience that you'll have, the enrichment, Boston College's commitment to student formation and really shaping the full person and preparing you for all aspects of life. But we also realize that there are pragmatists among you and that you are wanting to make sure that the college that, or university that you attend is preparing you well for your career aspirations. And I can assure you that Boston College does as well a, a job as any school in the country and better than most in preparing students for life after Boston College. We on our admitted student portal will be providing information from our career center that will help you understand a little bit more about outcomes at Boston College. But we offer a career center right on campus that begins working with students from the day you arrive on campus. You can take advantage of opportunities to learn about presenting yourself in a professional setting, obviously helping you learn to write your resume and perfect it, helping you practice interviews, bringing companies onto campus to interview with our students right at, at Boston College's campus. Last year, the success rate for graduates from the class of 2019, within six months of graduation, 95% of our students had achieved the goals that they set forth for their futures. Most of those, about 75% of them, were heading off to their first job, uh, heading off to their first employment opportunity. About 18% of our students went to graduate school, most commonly to medical school, law school, or even higher education. Very popular programs for students that are thinking about the next step in their education uh, in route to a very specific career goal that they have. About 4% of our students headed off to service, either through the Jesuit Volunteer Corps, Teach for America, or many other service opportunities where students have felt compelled to spend a year or more in service. And the last 5% pursued other opportunities, uh, whether it be internships, whether it be fellowships, uh, other ways that they are choosing to spend their time immediately after graduation before ultimately applying to graduate school or heading off into the career force. About 87% of our students last year engaged in an internship, a professional internship with more than 600 companies that we bring to campus each year, engaging with our students uh, and working through the Career Center. There was a question about research at Boston College and about a third of our students each year engage in research with faculty members. It could be in the natural sciences, the social sciences, the humanities, in the School of Management, any aspect of the university setting is furthering, furthering knowledge in their discipline and they're looking to engage undergraduate students in that research experience. There was a great question in the uh, uh, group that, that was uh, that forwarded questions to us in preparation of this webinar that asked, with so many colleges and universities in Boston, would you say Boston College students are at a disadvantage applying for internships in Boston? I thought it was a really insightful question, and, and I can assure you when you get to speak with our students and our director of the Career Center later this month, I assure you there are plenty of opportunities for Boston College students, and that Boston College students are actually some of the most desirable graduates that in, in the region. Boston, as you might know, is very well known for education. Uh, over 40 colleges and universities and within a 10 mile radius of the city, over 150,000 college students live in and around the city of Boston each year. But Boston is also one of the leading uh, parts of the country for financial services, second only to New York in terms of the financial services firms in, the, in this country. Boston leads the world in terms of medical and healthcare opportunities. Through the Cornell School of Nursing, as well as our, our pre-health programs, Boston College has 85 partnerships with healthcare providers in and around the city of Boston. Our students have opportunities to work in technology, in the technology sector in Cambridge and Boston, the innovation district down on the waterfront. There are so many resources in the city of Boston, and it's one of the reasons that such a high percentage of our students, again, 87% of our students, are engaged in internships during their Boston College careers. Now, some of our students, about 10% of our students, are 
enrolled in the, Carroll, the Connell School of Nursing and the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. Those programs build practicum experiences in hospitals and in classroom settings. And so many of those students are finding professional opportunities right through their curriculum and their placements in those settings. As I mentioned, there will be a student virtual panel talking all about career and postgraduate opportunities on April 13th. And there will be a Saturday webinar with the director of our career center and also members of our pre-law staff on April 25th. There were questions, quite a few questions about orientation. And many of these questions did have to do with coronavirus and wondering what will happen this summer uh, with regard to orientation. And that is one of those questions that I simply don't have an answer for yet. Uh, we will be offering a Saturday webinar with Allie Bain in the Office of BC First Year Experience who runs our orientation program. That will be held on April 18th. We fully expect by that date we will have a decision as to whether our orientation programs will be run on campus in person or through a virtual, virtual format but we will go through a full in-depth orientation program. Now at orientation, what you have to look forward to is getting to know other students. We break students down into small groups where you have a Boston College orientation leader, a current student that will help to facilitate conversations within those groups that will reflect on speeches and presentations that you hear as a group and bring it down to a discussion level to allow students to be able to talk through any questions or concerns that they might have and to do so in a safe and, and supportive environment. During orientation, students will also register for their classes. It's one of the great things about Boston College's orientation is that we hold our orientations throughout the course of the summer. We do hold one at the end of the summer that begins just before classes resume in the fall. But the idea is that when students are going through their summer between high school and, and college, there are a lot of emotions involved. We wanna to try to minimize any anxiety that you might be feeling by helping you come together and learn about Boston College to have those questions answered, but also to register for your classes so that you can then enjoy the rest of the summer, not worrying all summer about what your class schedule will look like. Again, Allie Bain from the Office of First Year Experience will be leading a Saturday webinar on April 18th. There were quite a few questions, as I would expect, about academics at Boston College. Students were interested in learning a little bit more about what the first year looks like. What is a typical class schedule that students might be able to manage in their first year? You're coming from a an experience over the last 12 years where you've been in a very structured environment. And one of the things I'm sure you know about the college experience is that it provides a lot more flexibility for students, not only in their course schedule in terms of when your classes are offered, but in terms of the courses that you actually choose to take. At Boston College, all of our students, regardless of whether you are enrolled in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, the Carroll School of Management, the Lynch School of Education and Human Development, or the Connell School of Nursing, will take part in the university core curriculum. It's a series of 15 courses that students choose from a variety of disciplines. Two courses in English, natural science, social science, theology, philosophy, and history. One course in the arts, cultural diversity, and mathematics. Within each of those disciplines, you have enormous choice. So students within our natural science curriculum could choose to take courses in biology, in environmental science, in chemistry, in geology, in geophysics. It runs the gamut, but it provides you a lot of flexibility to design your course schedule according to your interests. A typical first year curriculum, a typical curriculum for that matter in all four years, would be to take five courses each semester and two semesters per year. So over the course of an academic year, you'll take 10 courses. Each of those courses will meet for approximately three hours per week, about 15 hours in class each week. A lot more independent work takes place in college, a lot more reading, a lot more research, a lot more project work than you've had in high school. And so 
The additional time is not all free time, although there is a good amount of opportunity for students to engage in their social lives, and co-curricular development, but it does allow students time to structure their days in a way that allows them to focus on their independent work as well as their uh, class schedule. Students were asking about what course loads students might take in a specific major. Some of you said, what if I'm a biology major? Or if I was in the business school, what would that look like? And I think it really does depend on each individual student. We do find that students will take their English courses in their first year. You will take a freshman writing seminar and a literature course in the first year. And many students will choose to begin some of their coursework toward their major. So prerequisite courses uh, in a biology major, for example, might start out with a uh, biology course in your first semester. Uh, in the, the Carroll School of Management, for example, you might start in with Portico, which is our business ethics course that all first year students take, and perhaps adding in another business course uh, along with some of your core curriculum. Most of our students tend to take most of their core courses in the first two years. It's also a great way to explore the curriculum. So for students that might be watching tonight and saying, I simply don't know what I want to major in. You should rest assured that there is plenty of time to figure that out. And our core curriculum and our class advising system will really help you determine how to align your strengths and interests with a particular academic discipline. Students asked a little bit about uh, interest in an honors program and whether Boston College has one. Quite honestly, we used to have an honors program, but we don't anymore. As the academic quality of our students has accelerated through the years, we found that the students that typically ranked in the top 5% of our pool are really no different than the next cohort of students uh, right on down the road. And so there was very little differentiation between students in those programs. And because so many of our courses are taught in a small session, many of our first year core courses are capped at 19 students, not all of them, we certainly will have a lecture hall experiences at BC, probably not more than two or three over the course of your 40 classes that you'll take over four years, but most of them are relatively small and provide students the opportunity to have discussion-based courses. On average, the average class size when you factor in the very small and the very large is about 27 students per class. So most of them, again, in that smaller option. Students were asking a little bit about double majoring or majoring and minoring. Uh, if students could take courses in all four of the undergraduate divisions, the answer is yes to all of that. Our curriculum is set up to allow students to double major without having to add any time to their academic curriculum or their four years uh, at Boston College. Typically, a major in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences would range somewhere between 10 and 12 courses. I mentioned already that the core curriculum would bring about 15 courses. So a double major, if you maxed out at 12 on each major, uh, you would be looking at about 39 courses between the core and both majors. But some of those major courses, as I mentioned already, will fill requirements in the core. So generally, you might be at about 35 to 37 courses for a full double major. For students that bring in AP courses, qualifying scores of four and five, uh, we allow you to waive out of some of the core requirements to prove your proficiency through those score courses and, and those scores that you earn and be able to free up elective courses elsewhere. So a double major is very possible. A major and a minor is much easier to do. A minor is typically six courses. We have recently introduced minors across divisions. So if you are a student enrolled in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, you could take a minor in the Carroll School of Management, for example. Currently, 1,200 of our undergraduate students have minors in the, the Carroll School of Management with their majors in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. But you could take courses in all of the schools. Uh, even in the School of Nursing, while most of the nursing courses are reserved for students in that professional track, there are a number of courses. Uh, Professor Ann Burgess comes to mind, uh, who is a criminal pathologist, and she's worked with the FBI on a, a large number of cases. If any of you are fans of the Netflix show Mindhunter, the main character in that series was actually written based on Ann Burgess' life. Uh, and so she teaches a very popular 
course, each, some, each year, she brings in FBI agents, all sorts of really exciting ways for students. And many of our students from other schools might choose to take a course, even in the School of Nursing, uh, even though it's not a career path that a student might be choosing to pursue. I did mention AP courses. A uh, question was answered, a couple of them, about the new AP course uh, exams that will be offered this year. In lieu of the changes around the, the coronavirus, uh, that's a question I don't quite have an answer for you yet, but I will tell you that our intention is to honor those exams. You have worked very hard in those classes. You're continuing your hard work remotely. Uh, and for those of you that are planning to move forward, uh, you should have assurance that Boston College is going to do everything possible to make sure that that credit uh, is acknowledged. Uh, I will specify, I should have said pl advanced placement, uh, at Boston College, AP courses, the qualifying scores don't actually earn credit. As I mentioned, they will waive you out of requirements in our core curriculum. The only exception is that you, if you bring in the equivalent of a full year's worth of study, that would be 10 AP exams at four or five largely, uh, students could apply to graduate from Boston College in just three years, uh, advanced standing. Uh, not many of our students choose that option, even if they do have those qualifying scores uh, because they want to get the most out of their experience, but that is an option. Now the College Board will be finalizing uh, its intentions around those examinations. Their website is full, not fully uh, completed yet. Some of the AP exams, they have provided instructions on how those will be given and some they haven't. So we want to make sure that we fully understand how these exams will take place. College Board is promising by this Friday, April 3rd, those answers will be made and we will expect by next week or so that we will have a policy in place around those. For those of you uh, interested in uh, learning a little bit more about academics at Boston College, our students will be holding a virtual panel titled Classwork, Homework, and Teachers, a panel focused on the academic culture, climate, and offerings at Boston College, and that will take place next week on April 8th. There were some great questions about diversity on campus. Students wanting to make sure that Boston College is uh, a place that celebrates and welcomes diversity, and I can assure you it is. Uh, students were asking questions about the overall environment at Boston College, about the percentage of students of color on campus, and ways that we support students of color on campus. Last year, the freshman class welcomed 36% of its students that came from what we refer to as AHANA backgrounds. AHANA is an acronym that stands for African American, Hispanic, Asian, and Native American students. And that term was coined at Boston College almost 40 years ago when students came forward, students of color that really felt as though the word minority, which was being used at the time, uh, was not the appropriate term for that group. They said, if you look up in the dictionary, the word minority, means less than, and that's not a way that we want to re refer to our community. And our university heard those students, and so the term AHANA was born. You'll see this used at many other college campuses, but it is trademarked right here at Boston College. And so about 36% of our class uh, came in from AHANA backgrounds. Uh, they represented students from all throughout the country and around the world. It doesn't include roughly 8% of our students that held foreign citizenship, and another four or five percent of our students that held dual U.S. citizenship but lived abroad. So students come from a wide variety of backgrounds and there are incredible resources at Boston College. To begin, there's the Thea Bowman Ahana and Intercultural Center, which provides all sorts of programming and resources for students. It's right in the heart of our campus on that lower campus where I mentioned, right in the Division of Student Affairs. They provide all sorts of programming throughout the course of the year. They provide mentoring and leadership opportunities for students that are looking for a supportive network right within that office. There is an opportunity for students within our residential living experience known as living learning communities. And I hope that you will learn a little bit more about those through your admitted student portal where we've provided information. One of them is called MLE or the Multicultural Learning Experience. And it's a floor that is committed to exploring issues of race, gender, sexual orientation, ethnicity, physical disability, and more. 
It's a place that celebrates diversity of all kinds. And for students that are looking to live in a community that is really thinking about these issues, leading programs on the floor and for the greater community, and students that are looking to have a leadership role in their freshman year around issues of diversity, I would strongly encourage you to consider applying for the MLE program, the MLE residence hall, I should say. There are countless clubs and organizations that support students of color that really foster diversity of all students uh, and celebrate diversity for students that want to learn more about different cultures and different backgrounds with which they not, might not be familiar. One of the largest student or, or activities on campus each year would have taken place this month uh, in, in late early April, I should say, and it's known as Showdown. And it is a celebration of dance organizations, many of them cultural organizations and many not. Uh, about 5,000 students will come as spectators down to Conti Forum where our basketball and hockey teams play and watch a dance competition with about 30 of our dance groups uh, that put on a production and a competition for bragging rights on the best dance group at Boston College. It is sponsored by uh, the Ahana Intercultural Center uh, and a great celebration of diversity on campus. We have a program known as the McNair Scholars Program. And we know that in many graduate programs, students of color are underrepresented. And so the McNair Scholars Program is a specific academic mentoring program for Ahana students at Boston College to help prepare them and to encourage them to consider graduate programs in the STEM fields and law school in other areas as well. I also had some questions uh, unrelated, but somewhat related uh, to students that were interested in other aspects of diversity, particularly how low income students at Boston College and first generation college students are supported. Uh, there is an office uh, also within that same division known as a learning to learn and learning to learn has been at Boston College for decades and supporting first generation student college students uh, that might not be as sophisticated about expectations in the academic classroom or on a college campus in general. We provide an opportunity known as BC first for first generation students to take part in a two week uh, pre college program this summer. Uh, to help develop community within that population, to help students meet other first generation students, and to help educate students on some of the vernacular and terms perhaps that might not be commonplace. Uh, a place for students to come together and really do feel supported. For low income students, there are all sorts of resources. I mentioned already that Boston College is proud to be an institution that is need blind and meets the full need of every student. But when you go to college, there are other expenses that come up. Many of our students that receive financial aid might have a job on campus, a work study job that helps provide them a weekly income. Some of those students might need that income uh, to take care of expenses that they have day to day. But there are, is an office on campus known as Montserrat. And Montserrat seeks to help fill the gaps of unexpected uh, opportunities that might come up that requires some cash, maybe not a lot, but uh, that would prevent some students from being able to take advantage of going to a football game, uh, the entrance fee for showdown, uh, opportunities to uh, perhaps take a, get a ride to a job interview. Uh, if that sort of income is difficult for students, Montserrat provides resources for them, providing free tickets for low-income students to many of those events, providing perhaps uh, in the winter, a warm coat or hat and mittens, things that perhaps students didn't prepare to bring or came from a part of the country where a winter coat in the south is a very different coat than a winter coat in the northeast. So uh, Montserrat is an incredible resource. McNair Scholars also works with low-income students. And we are also proud that Boston College boasts one of the top 25 graduation rates in the country for Pell students, the low-income students receiving Pell grants from the federal government. This is an extraordinary testament, I think, to the support that Boston College provides low-income students, that they're able to come back and persist uh, at almost identical rates as everyone else. Last year, 92% of our students graduated from Boston College and 90% of our Pell, income, Pell, Pell students as well. Now, I would encourage you to learn more about 
diversity at Boston College about some of these opportunities that I mentioned. We will be introducing in your newsletter tomorrow a virtual Keith A. Francis Ahana Weekend Program. Typically in a given year in April, as part of our first weekend for on-campus activities, we have an opportunity for Ahana students to come together and spend a couple of days with us. That will be moved online. We hope that you will participate in that program. We will also have a virtual panel of our current students associated with that program on three consecutive weeks in April. So be watching for information about that as well. Some of the additional questions that we had had to do with pre-advisory programs, particularly pre-med or pre-health programs, pre-vet, pre-dental, or pre-law. Many of you have aspirations to go off to medical school or dental school, veterinary school. Perhaps you're heading off to law school. Boston College provides many resources to help prepare students for success in those goals. The first is that we do offer a comprehensive pre-health program. What is most different about our program at Boston College versus many other programs at highly selective universities is that our program is open enrollment. Many institutions, oftentimes to protect their admission rates into medical school, will make sure that students have to maintain a minimum GPA in order to pursue their goal of becoming a physician. Boston College opens our program to any student, regardless of GPA. Some of our students might just miss a GPA threshold, and they might still be a perfect uh, candidate for a, a graduate program in medicine. So when we look at our placement rates, you might find them to be just slightly smaller than some of the most selected institutions, but they almost double the national average. Last year, nationally, just 41% of all applicants to medical school were admitted. And at Boston College, our admission rate was 75%. To dental school, 100% uh, admission rate at Boston College versus a 51% nation, uh, admit rate nationwide. So why is that? It's because Boston College, again, prepares students so well academically in the classroom, but also our pre-health program provides the sort of advising that students need to make decisions about where to apply and how to apply. We work with students from very early on in their, in their college days to learn about our curricular expectations, medical school's curricular expectations, so that you are taking the right courses that you'll need to prepare for the MCAT. We have programs that will help provide study sessions and give you opportunities to engage uh, in mock interviews and really prepare for those interviews for medical school. Uh, we would encourage you to uh, think about learning more uh, in depth about pre-health programs. We will have a virtual student panel on the STEM fields at Boston College, not just about pre-health, but about all STEM fields later this month, the date still to be announced. And we will also have a Saturday webinar on April 11th with advisors in our pre-health program. So I would encourage you uh, to take advantage of those. As I mentioned earlier, when I was talking about Boston and the resources and all of the medical centers in Boston, our students, our nurses and our pre-med students have internships or practical experiences at literally the best hospitals in the world. Boston Children's Hospital, Mass General Hospital, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital. People come from all over the world to be treated in these facilities. And Boston College students really do have an advantage when they're applying to medical schools because they have had training in some of the very best hospitals in the world. It's another reason why studying just outside the city of Boston is such a resource for our students. We also provide a robust pre-law program for students that are thinking about uh, heading off to law school. Uh, we have a set of advisors that will do many of the same things that our advisors in our pre-health program uh, will provide helping you prepare in terms of your curriculum to think about what type of law you might want to practice and coupling an undergraduate major perhaps with uh, that intention in mind. Uh, many of our professors, our law professors, some of them will actually teach undergraduate students. Uh, there was a course offered last year, a freshman core course that was team taught through our core renewal program that combines two courses together from different disciplines. And this course was taught on the economics 
and Legalization of Healthcare. And it was taught by a BC law professor and an undergraduate professor uh, in uh, political science and economics rather. Uh, so it really provides students, even at the undergraduate level, an opportunity uh, to engage with some of our law faculty. I will also mention for some of you that are very eager to earn your law degree and some of you that might even be thinking of doing that at Boston College, we also offer a three plus three undergraduate and law degree, allowing students to earn both their bachelor's and their law degree in just six years instead of the customary seven. Students would apply to that program at the end of in their junior year and at the end of that junior year, their law studies would begin. So something for you to explore on our website if you're interested in learning more. And there will be, again, that webinar on Saturday, April 25th, that talks about both career opportunities and the pre-law program. There were a few general questions just about Boston College in this age of the coronavirus that I'd, I'd like to reflect on just for a moment. Uh, one of you had asked you know, whether or not campus is open, if you could just stop by and walk around uh, or perhaps could you even drive through campus and, and take a look? Uh, we are discouraging that. Uh, Massachusetts, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, just like many states, most states throughout the U.S., is really practicing social distancing and challenging people to uh, remain in place, uh, shelter in place, if you will. Uh, not a mandate in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but uh, a request by the governor. And so out of respect for that, and, and also President Trump's mandate uh, that, that social distancing will maintain through the end of April, um, we would discourage you from coming to campus. We don't have a main thoroughfare right through the, the main part of campus anyway, so you really would not be able to see too much from your car. Some of you were asking if Boston College intends to extend our enrollment deadline of May 1st. There have been some schools in the US that have decided to move their deadline to June 1st, but Boston College is not one of them. Uh, because some of these schools are hopeful that their campuses will be open for campus visits in May, uh, that reality at Boston College simply isn't there. Um, our campus uh, will be closed for programming uh, through the end of April, we do not have programming scheduled in May, uh, and because our students can't be here uh, through the end of the semester anyway, there would be no one to lead tours and, and uh, give these programs, even if we were able to offer them. Uh, so the advantage of waiting an extra month isn't there in terms of a campus visit. Some colleges have said that they might not be able to help students understand their financial aid packages in time. Boston College is committing to do that. So as I mentioned before, if, if cost is a concern, we would like you to reach out to our financial aid counselors so that we can make sure that you have the information you need to ensure that Boston College is affordable for your family. So we really feel that if we were to postpone that deadline, it would cause a domino effect for many other parts of your student process, your transition process. Uh, some families feel like it might give them more time we feel like it would actually prolong the anxiety for students, the uncertainty that exists uh, in terms of their future. So by committing by May 1st, um, we will immediately begin to move forward with planning for housing, with our orientations and everything else that we're doing to prepare for your successful and smooth arrival on campus uh, with us this fall. There was a question, uh, many questions about what happens if campus isn't ready to open in the fall? And that's a question that, quite frankly, we don't have an answer to, and I don't know of a college in the country that has an answer to. We all wonder and wish we had a crystal ball. We're all wondering when life will return to normal. Uh, we know that it will, uh, but we don't know when. Um, we are uh, working under the expectation that we will be open in the fall, but just like every administrator on any college campus in the country, we are certainly thinking about what that might look like if we weren't able to open our doors in the fall. Again, our hope and our expectation is that we will, uh, but if things change, we certainly will communicate that to all of you as quickly as we know it. There were many questions that you submitted, and thank you again for so many great questions about student life, the student experience at Boston College. How do you get involved in clubs or organizations? Uh, can students be involved in any of them? If you're not majoring in theater or music, can you take part in some of those performances? The answer is yes. Every September, typically the first Friday of the semester, Boston College puts on what we call the Student Involvement Fair. 
we have over 300 clubs and organizations on campus, just about anything you can imagine. And our students put on almost like a college fair, if you will, uh, tables that line our campus green and students walk around learning about the different ways to get involved. And it's a great way to explore and figure out where you'd like to spend your time outside the classroom. All of our students can be involved in our art scene at Boston College. BC has long been known for a great campus for athletics, but we are equally known for being an exceptional campus for the arts. Typically each April we put on what is known as Arts Fest, which is a, a three-day celebration of the arts, the culmination of the hard work that our students have put on all year with three full days of events, dance performances, theater performances, musical uh, renditions, uh, opportunities for visual artists to showcase their work, all sorts of ways for students to be involved. Students in theater at Boston College uh, can take part in all of our programs. We typically put on about uh, 12 productions a year, usually four on the main stage and many in our smaller black box stu studio, the Bond Studio, uh, that provides students a wide range of ways to get involved. We always put on a musical, always something contemporary, always a classic, providing students a, a variety of different genres uh, to explore. Uh, on the stage. Uh, all of our productions are open audition. Um, many of our theater majors as part of their courses take a directing class and in that directing class they need to direct a one act and so there are often throughout the course of the year auditions just for their one act uh, for students that want to rather than spending two months in rehearsal maybe spend three weeks getting ready for this uh, this performance. It's a way for theater performances uh, to really fit the schedules of our students, depending on how busy they might be. Uh, musical opportunities uh, from the BC Chorale that sings with the Boston Pops every September in a scholarship gala in the Conti Forum on campus uh, to uh, our, our performance groups and uh, the marching band to uh, quartets to brass bands and jazz bands all sorts of ways for students to be involved. And so we very much encourage you, if you have those artistic talents, to pursue them at Boston College. And we will have a uh, last question. I'm not gonna answer, but I'm gonna tease uh, a great question. What are some favorite traditions at Boston College? And I'm gonna leave that one for our panel because we actually have planned a student panel uh, on traditions at Boston College and that will be held on April 20th. We had a number of questions about studying abroad and how difficult or easy it is to do so. Boston College, again, makes it incredibly easy for students that want to have a global experience during their time at Boston College. We offer over 200 programs uh, on almost every continent around the, the, the world, six of the seven continents, where students can spend a semester or a full year immersed in a culture, immersed in a part of the world that perhaps resonates with their career goals, uh, allowing them to explore culture, explore languages. We have an Office of International Programs that will work with students to help them understand the opportunities that they have. We often challenge students to think about what they want to get out of their study abroad experience. For some of our students, they're interested in language acquisition. They've been studying a foreign language for a number of years, and they want to become fluent. It's a great way to immerse yourself in a part of the world that speaks that language and come home from that experience fluent in that language. Other students are looking for an experience that allows them to explore their academic interests. Our advisors will help you find programs to do that. Students might be thinking, I want to study in Europe and I'm interested in business. I wanna go off to the London School of Economics. Well, many of our programs are highly selective and so uh, our advisors will help you think about some other programs that might also provide a similar experience, but might be a little bit more geared toward what you need to pursue. Our students, when they apply for these study abroad programs, typically do so for a semester. We do, again, have some full year programs. And students typically, a little more than half of our students will study abroad in their junior year. Usually about half of them will study abroad in the fall and half of them in the spring. When you move through the study abroad application process, we'll ask you to select six options. We ask you to select some in the fall and some in the spring, 
but six different locations and times that you might be thinking about studying abroad, and we are able to match students with one of those choices. In the event that we can't match you with one of those six, uh, there are other opportunities after that selection process to match with one of our remaining programs. Because the majority of our programs are all run right through Boston College, it makes it quite seamless for you to take advantage of these uh, at Boston College and not lose any time or money in the process. Our students that study abroad through a, one of our programs will, make, will ensure that all of their credits transfer back to Boston College. Uh, and also if you are receiving need-based financial aid at Boston College, that will also carry with you while you're abroad. You'll continue to pay your costs at Boston College, whether you're on financial aid or not, that allows you to ensure that your budgeting is seamless throughout that college experience. Now there might be some additional costs around travel or sightseeing if you choose to do so while you're overseas and most of our students will spend some time doing that. So you might incur some additional personal expenses, but in terms of your tuition room and board, all of that will remain constant. You can even study abroad, someone asked, if you're in the School of Nursing, if you're a student athlete, we can work with you to find opportunities. Uh, if for whatever reason you didn't feel as though you wanted to go during the academic year, we also have some summer programs that students can consider. And we will have a student virtual panel on studying abroad on April 27th. We're nearing the end of our questions. I do have a few more. I wanna thank you so much for staying involved and staying on with us for so long. There are a few last questions here. One is a very important question. I was surprised it wasn't asked more often, but that was about the food at Boston College. How is the dining uh, experience at Boston College? And we are proud that we have been ranked one of number seven in the country uh, for student dining experiences, both the quality and variety of food options at Boston College. There are three main dining halls on campus, one adjacent to the upper campus, as I mentioned, one on Newton campus, and one on uh, the, the lower campus. Uh, these provide dining options from virtually six in the morning until two in the morning on the weekends, midnight, generally during the week. And then there are many other dining areas throughout campus, either sandwich and salad shops or uh, coffee shops, places that students can congregate for lunch or breakfast uh, that allows them to have a wide variety of options. At Boston College, our dining plan is a declining debit plan. Many colleges and universities will have a set number of meals per week that students take advantage of. Oftentimes, there are 21 meals in a week. You might be offered 19 meals, and once you use those 19 meals, uh, your meals are gone for the week. Boston College will start each semester with a set amount of money in your account, and you simply purchase, uh, you pay for each item that you purchase. It allows us to reduce waste. Students are not going to buy food, they're not going to eat. It also allows students the convenience of taking food out of the dining hall if you'd like to bring food back to your residence hall uh, to keep it there, snacks, things like that. Whereas at a full service dining area on another campus, you wouldn't be allowed to take any food out of the dining hall. And also if you go home for the weekend or visit a friend on another campus or, uh, or if you just order out for a meal, you're not losing that meal your balance at the end of the weekend will be exactly what it was on Friday afternoon when you left. So it provides you a great deal of flexibility and any money remaining on your dining card at the end of the first semester just rolls right over to the second semester. At the end of the year, you do need to use all that food, uh, make friends at the end of the year for students that might need uh, you know, some help with, uh, with their plans, but really some great opportunities. Uh, the dining services at Boston College are owned and run by Boston College. We don't farm our resources out to another company. I won't name names, but most college campuses have a contractor that they hire to serve their food. Boston College owns our whole operation, so it allows the quality and diversity of food offerings to really be top-notch. For those of you interested, as I mentioned uh, already, there will be a webinar this Saturday uh, with our Associate Director of Residential Life and our Director of Dining Services at Boston College. So I encourage you to tune in to learn a lot more about those options. There are also some questions specific to the Carroll School of Management, quite a few of them, uh, wanting to know a little bit more about the size of the program, the strength of the program, uh, things like that. 
Um, as I mentioned, there are four undergraduate divisions at Boston College. About 65% of our students are enrolled in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, about 25% of our students in the Carroll School of Management, about 550 students each year. About 120 students are enrolled in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development, and about 110 students in the Connell School of Nursing. So the School of Management, the second largest school, it has been ranked one of the top 10 undergraduate business programs. It was recently ranked uh, number one in the country for the quality of teaching within the Carroll School of Management, within business schools across the country. Poets and Quants is the most reputable uh, ranking agency for uh, business programs, both at the undergraduate and graduate level. And that's where Boston College holds those top 10 and number one teaching rankings. You can learn more about the Carroll School of Management from uh, the, one of the deans, the Associate Dean Sullivan and Professor Amy Lacombe on Saturday, April 18th. And there will be a virtual student panel about the Carroll, from students enrolled in the Carroll School of Management talking about their experience in the classroom on April 22nd. We will also be holding uh, other webcasts and I'd like to just maybe finish up here by telling you a little bit more about some of these and then making some closing remarks. But we will have for students interested in the Connell School of Nursing, a virtual student panel uh, on Thursday, April 2nd, for coming up in just two days and also a Saturday webinar with the Dean of the Connell School, Susan Gennaro, and her colleagues on Saturday, April 18th. We will have a student virtual panel for students enrolled in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development on April 16th, and a webinar with the Associate Dean of the Lynch School, Julia DeVoy, on Saturday, April 18th. A few others just to point out, we have a webinar scheduled for international students talking all about the international student experience from Adrian Nussbaum in the Office of International Students and Scholars on Saturday, April 25th. And as I mentioned, tomorrow when you get that email, you will see a whole host of other student-led seminars, freshman panels, a, a group of freshman students speaking about their first year in that transition a panel of all seniors talking about their four years reflecting back on their experience and what Boston College has meant for them and many other opportunities. So we are so delighted that you've chosen to spend some time with us tonight, but we know there is so much more information for you to learn in the weeks ahead. I will also mention this is a period of time when we are moving into Holy Week uh, at Boston College. And for those of you that celebrate Holy Week, I want to make sure that you know that Boston College will be live streaming masses beginning on Holy Thursday through uh, Easter Sunday, uh, right on the Boston College website. So we encourage you to engage with us in that way as spiritual development and spiritual growth is so important for so many of our students. For families celebrating Passover next week, we also wish you a happy holiday and we'll be thinking of you as well. I'd like to wish you all a great process of this deliberation. We are so excited to engage with you. I want to mention as well, as we've explained already, in your admitted student portal, you will also find the contact information for your admission counselor, the person that read your file and chose to nominate you for admission to Boston College. Uh, their contact information is there, our phone numbers, our email addresses. Please get in touch with us if there are additional questions that we weren't able to answer tonight that you still have or that you can't find answers to through the series of programs that we have scheduled for you. I wish you all a great deal of success. You will make the right decision for you. Uh, we look forward to seeing so many of you at Boston College next year. And I'm going to depart uh, with the final words uh, from our colleague, Dean Gennaro in the Connell School of Nursing, uh, School of Nursing who so signed off in an email this past week to me that said, wash your hands and remember whose hands you're in. God bless, thank you for joining us tonight and we'll look forward to engaging with you in the weeks ahead.